Thanks to everyone for attending this virtual meeting for planning on Thursday the 28th of May 2020. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Councillor June Molyneux and I'm Chair of the Committee. Councillor Chris Francis, Vice Chair. Also present are officers and councillors who you'll hear from in a moment. Please note it's an audio only meeting and is being recorded and the audio stream will be live on YouTube. The web address for this can be found on, our, on the council website. If you've joined the call because you're a member of the public who is registered to speak, please note that you'll have a time limit of three minutes. Your microphone will be unmuted when I invite you to speak. The legal officer will operate a stopwatch and confirm when your time runs out. You should then finish or if in the middle of making a point, wind up within a few seconds. Otherwise, your microphone will be muted. For ease, a pack has been prepared which contains reports, plans, presentation slides and any addendum for every item yeah. to ensure we can easily follow the agenda. This is available online. Mm -hmm. After officers have presented the report and any speakers have made their representations, I'll invite each member in alphabetical order to make any comments to ensure everyone has the opportunity to speak. When speaking, please reference the page, paragraph number and page number to enable everyone to follow you. Our legal officer, Alex, will repeat the motion before the vote is taken to ensure everyone is aware of what is being voted on. And I'll call upon each member in alphabetical order to vote. Alex will confirm the outcome of the decision. If technology fails, I'll adjourn the meeting for a few minutes to try and resolve the issue. And if this isn't possible, a new date and time will be organised. Please, oh, excuse me. Please can I ask members to confirm they can hear and speak before the meeting begins. I'll call out each member. Councillor Beaver? Yes, Chair. Councillor Corns? Yes, Chair. Councillor Gordon Fram? Yes, Chair. Councillor Tom Gray? Oh, yes, OK. Councillor Yvonne Hargreaves? Yes, I can hear. Councillor Holgate? Yes, I'm here. Councillor Morwood? Yes, Chair. Councillor Whittam? Yes, Chair. Councillor Whitaker? Yes. Councillor Chris France. Yep. And our officers Adele? Yes, Chair. Ian Crossland? Yes, Chair. Alex Jackson, the legal officer? Yes, Chair. And Philippa, our democratic services officer? Yes, Chair. Okay. With that, I've had apologies from Councillors Hilton, Boardman, Dalton and Danny G. With Steve Holgate and Valcon substituting. Have I any declarations of interest? I think with that silence, I haven't. <laughs> we have two, we have three planning applications. Planning applications to be determined. There are three items. For the benefit of the public listening, the speaking arrangements are as follows. Officers will summarise the report. Registered speakers will be invited to speak in the following order. Objector, supporter, parish town councillor, ward councillor, applicant or agent. All registered speakers will be allowed to speak for three minutes, apart from a ward councillor who may speak for up to five minutes. In the event that all speakers are against an application, as chair, I will grant the applicant or representative a time extension. I would respectfully ask members of the public who haven't registered to speak to remain quiet throughout the proceedings. So we will go on to that. From 3A, no, we're going to 3B first, aren't we? Chair, if I may, it's Philippa. I think we now have all speakers on the line. So I think Valerie Allen is now on the line and we can take three. Oh, okay, yeah, right. we'll, we'll do it in, right, in the right order then. <laughs> so thanks, uh, item 3A, 18 New Street, Maudsley. Pages 3, 3 to 32 with an update on your addendum. Ian's going, Ian's going to present this item. The recommendation is the application is approved subject to conditions of a section 106 obligation to secure improvements to public open space. I have two registered speakers, an objective Valerie Allen and the agent Rob Harrison. Valerie, can you confirm that you're able to speak and hear the proceedings? Yes, I can. Can you Rob, hear can me? You? Uh, yes, I can as well. Thank you. Ian, could you present the item? Please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, th this application seeks outline planning permission for the erection of four dwellings with all matters reserved safe for access. Members will recall that this application was presented to the committee on the 3rd of March, where a decision was deferred in order to allow members to undertake a site visit. Members visited the site last week on the 20th of May. The application site comprises a vehicle repairs garage and is previously developed land in the settlement area of Morsley to the rear of dwellings fronting New Street. It forms part of an allocated employment site within the local plan. 
The proposed development is small in scale and we contained within the existing pattern of development within the settlement area, where there's a presumption in favour of sustainable development as set out in the framework and the Chorley local plan. Although the site's protected for employment use, there are a number of factors in support of the proposed development, including poor access for commercial activity, a lack of access to wider the wider employment allocation, and the unsuitability of the site for employment and industrial uses, given the surrounding residential uses and the potential amenity issues that this can uh, present. In consideration of the evolving nature of the surrounding land and the need to protect residential amenity and prevent the possibility of a statutory noise nuisance, the, the proposed residential development is considered to be in general compliance with the development plan as a whole and is considered to be acceptable in principle. It's considered that four dwellings of an appropriate scale, layout and appearance could be provided on the application site that would reflect the character of the area and that an acceptable relationship can be achieved with the existing, surround, existing surrounding and nearby properties and between the proposed properties themselves without any harm to residential amenity. Um, Lancashire County Council Highways have confirmed that they do not have any objections regarding the proposed development and are of the opinion that the proposed development would not have a significant impact on highway safety, capacity or immunity in the immediate vicinity of the site and that there is adequate evidence to demonstrate that off-road parking provision necessary for each individual property can be achieved. Mm. The, county, the County Council have uh, confirmed that the width of the access means that it isn't of an adoptable standard. However, the, uh, the, the, the size the, Size, size of the site is, wouldn't normally be considered for adoption in any event and the access is considered to be acceptable in highway safety terms. Overall the proposed development is considered to be in accordance with the policies of the development plan and is recommended for approval subject to conditions and a section 106 agreement. Thank you Chair. Okay thanks Ian. Uh, Valerie, when uh, Alex has started the timer if you'd like to start. Yes uh, Miss Allen, it's a legal officer here. I'll start the timer now and you have three minutes so uh, off you go please. Okay, thanks. Right, the need for more large detached houses in the village has not been met. The recent planning permission to erect 56 houses on the site of Goodyear's on Gorsey Lane has four and five bedroom houses starting from just under £400,000. Many remain unsold. This increases 56 houses, assuming a family of four with two cars, will already add another 224 people and another 112 cars to the village. A village that only has two schools, one shop and one public house. With a limited bus service to Chorley and Southport, any more pressures on these amenities will result in schools being oversubscribed. The land now acts as a buffer between the 56 new houses and the properties that front New Street. Number 24 was built in the 1960s by my father and has enjoyed open views to the rear for nearly 60 years. The original planning permission in February 1980 was for an MOT testing garage and workshop and to my memory not used to any large extent. The land has reverted back to nature with many established trees and wildlife. The four houses in this application would directly overlook the rear of number 22 and 24 and tower over others on New Street. The original planning consent had provisions to protect the visual amenities of the area and to safeguard the land and the amenities of the occupiers of the adjoining properties. This application does not. I would question whether a site visit in the last few weeks by councillors during lockdown can possibly give the relevant current facts and information required to make this decision. The current levels of traffic have decreased dramatically and do not give a true indication of the usual levels that vehicles would encounter during entrance and exit to this site. Similarly, whether a decision can be made during the COVID-19 pandemic when housing prices are set to decrease by up to 13% to March 21, according to the Centre for Economics and Business Research. The effect of any such decision could leave more houses unsold and empty, giving rise to vandalism and theft. As the Parish Council has highlighted, this site does not have ample space for vehicles exiting and entering at the same time. According to the Central Lancashire Controlling Reuse of Employment Premises document, 
Small employment sites should be retained as they contribute significantly to the local economy, in particular in rural areas which support a strong <coughs> local economy. Employment opportunities in the village are scarce enough without taking this land for more large detached houses that are not needed. Indeed, within Indeed, with unemployment set to rise after the furlough scheme ends, the council should be safeguarding any employment opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rob, would you like to make your representations now, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Harris, it's a legal officer here. Uh, legal officer here. I'll set the three-minute timer uh, now. Okay, thank you very much. So during the, the previous committee meeting, uh, committee members wanted to undertake a site visit and there was also comments made about highways and the access. Uh, just to remind uh, committee members that uh, your planning department uh, have consulted uh, Lancashire County Council Highways Department and after carrying out their own assessment, no concerns regarding highways or access were made in respect of the proposal. Likewise, there were no concerns about uh, about impact on the character and appearance of the locality, neighbouring amenity, ecology, flood risk or drainage. These assessments were conducted by a suitably qualified uh, person, Chorley Council engaged. The application site is surrounded by existing housing and the new residential development on Goodyear's Furniture Centre. No employment will be lost as the site is private storage. The use of the site as an MOT centre and vehicle workshop ceased in 2010. The application is for outline permission with details of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale being reserved and not for discussion this afternoon. A comprehensive marketing strategy was undertaken in line with policy 10 and there was no demand for the site uh, for employment uses. The site is previously developed land and there is a presumption in favour of the redevelopment of previously developed land under national planning policy framework. Your planning department concluded that the site is a sustainable, a sustainable location, being within the Maudsley village settlement boundaries. And they've also concluded that, development, that the development meets policy 10 criteria A to H. A planning committee must have a planning reason to vote contrary to the recommendation presented by a planning department. This application has been assessed by your planning department against relevant policy and various third party assessments commissioned by your planning department to deal with matters such as highway, highways have been undertaken. Both the, planning, both the planning department assessment and the third party report found that the application to be acceptable and recommend it for approval based on planning grounds. Just, I just want to pick up on a, uh, um, a, a, a few matters. I think uh, mentioned by the objector, I think linking this application to the larger Goodyear development is not applicable and uh, shouldn't really be part of the assessment in determining this application. They're completely two separate sites. And also, whether or not the houses sell, that's to be seen. And I don't think whether the houses will sell or not uh, is a planning consideration. Uh, thank you. OK, thank you. Ian, do you want to come back on anything or I'll move to members? No, no, happy to your members. OK, Thanks, uh, I'll go through each member alphabetically for any comments, uh, questions and recommendations. Councillor mm -hmm. Beaver. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about it. Just on page four, paragraph six, some of the representations, it says the site has not been used for many years and should be returned to the green belt, which is contrary to Maudsley Parish Council, who are looking to maintain it as employment. So. The village is at conflict with itself. Um, a planning uh, site visit was requested, and I can assure, um, assure Mrs. Allen that it was conducted properly. All the regulations regarding COVID were um, conducted, carried out, and the, nothing detracted away from the site visit. And we were able to walk away from there with the information that we went there for. Um, it's been suggested by the parish council that the, the, the allocated site has not apparently been subject to a robust marketing exercise. Now, I don't know how much um, weight this carries, and the, the, the proposed development is inappropriate as a flood risk area. Well, when we went on that site visit, there didn't seem to be any evidence that it was a flood risk. 
Uh, and we put a lot of money into flood risk uh, measures for that village anyway. County Council, Highway Service and no objections. Um, the only thing that on, on my main thing is in the addendum on page 31, and I'll just fly down to it, it mentions any development of the site must consider the potential impact of the amenity of neighbourhood occupiers at numbers 20 to 28 New Street through the impact of privacy, outlook and light in relation to both the impact of facing habitable room windows of these properties and the impact of their rear garden areas. It should also consider the impact that development may have in relation to numbers 30, 32 and 34 of New Street as they would be overlooked by any houses on that site. Now, to my mind, this is a reason that we could consider refusal for this because of the amenities for, for neighbours. If we can't talk about that on today, and if it was passed, would we be able to refuse it at a subsequent one when the details are in? And I would suggest um, that these are reasons that we can refuse. Um, so my mind Ian. is what Ian. would be done to measure that? Can I, can I let Ian come in first, Darren? Certainly. Sorry, Ian. Ask me finish, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, through you, Chair. Um, yes, through you, through you, Chair. Yeah, and just, just in response to the, the question about um, the ability to assess the impact of, uh, of the development once we receive details. Yeah, uh, the, the application is only in outline at the moment, so we, we don't know where the houses would go and we don't know uh, the scale of the houses. All we know is that, that the principle of, uh, of four dwellings on the site is sought. Now, a further if planning permission was, was granted in outline, a further application would have to be submitted for reserve matters. And at that time, we are able to have a look at the, at the details of what's coming forward. And that application would also have to be presented to the committee. And at that time, we will be able to properly assess the full impact on neighbour amenity. Thank you, Chair. Okay, May I come back with that on, Chair? Okay. Just on the indicative plan, with the, the programme, the, the drawings that are overlaid onto the, the photographs, that's showing us where they're going. Now, the reality is that when it comes next time, they may be in completely different places. Mm. Is that the case, yeah. Ian? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you, thank Chair. you very yes. much. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Councillor Combs. Hello, yes, thank you. Um, I would have concerns about um, the, the fact that there are two entrances coming onto New Street next door to each other um, and, and how that would actually impact on New Street. Um, another concern I have is to do with flooding, which um, I do remember not long ago there was a serious problem in the dip, which is only a matter of probably 50 yards away from this area um, that was very badly affected with flooding. And if the ground is so much higher than that, will will the, the runoff not sort of head back and create more problems? Um, and finally, obviously, because there isn't um, enough detail in the plan itself, um, if if planning was permitted, um, would it be possible to insist on any more um, planted green areas um, in in that particular spot? Um, and that would be my or my concerns. Okay, Ian, do you want to come back on that? Um, yeah, yes, please, Chair. Um, through you, uh, the the yes, the access arrangements are unusual because you do have. Um, two accesses um, immediately adjacent to each other, which is an unusual arrangement. Now, that, that is something that the County Council have obviously considered in uh, assessing the, the safety um, of that access. And one of the other things that we have to consider in making that assessment is that, that the site can presently be used as a vehicle Hello. repairs garage. Um, so they're having to consider it, its current use of vehicle repairs garage if it was fully operational. Um, in comparison with four houses and their conclusion is that the impact wouldn't actually be as bad as, as the poten present potential. Um, in, re in relation to, uh, to flood risk, um, obviously we don't have any details of the site drainage at, at present. If uh, a reserve matters application were to follow on from this, at that stage we would be able to start looking 
at uh, how the uh, on-site drainage would work, but we certainly we will be looking to uh, to for there to be no greater uh, increase in surface water runoff from any development of the site. Um, and the, the final point about uh, about landscaping, um, obviously. What, at a, a reserve matter stage, we can then look at, um, at landscaping on the development, and we would obviously be, we would look to retain trees that are there and, and make improvements where possible. Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Yvonne Hargreaves, please. Can, can you go through, through everybody, please, in order? Councillor okay. France. Hi. Um, yeah, I've only one sort of query on this site was the reduction in Whitby and below the guidance for LCC. And Ian quite kindly sent me back an email, and I ways are fine with it, so I have no no more questions. Okay, Councillor Gray. Oh, I'm all right with this. Uh, I'm going with the officer's recommendation. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hargreaves. Oh, I just a couple of points to pick up on um, Councillor Corn. Get in, par in page five, paragraph five. It's um, talking about this uh, a culvert underneath New Street. Which is already unable to cope with the amount of water, which is in recent past has resulted in the flooding of homes on New Street. So, therefore, what they're saying is to actually build more houses would itself purely exacerbate the problem. And I'm just wondering what, uh, in relation to what Ian says, has this actually been looked at properly? Has anybody actually come back with any Ian. more information regarding the? Um, the runoff of surface water. Oh, Christ. Ian? Yeah, uh, yes. through you, Chair. Um, at, at this stage, we don't have the, the details to be able to assess what that impact will be. Obviously, there's a number of uh, engineering solutions that can be uh, can, can be explored when, when we're looking at a, a new development. And it's not always uh, the case that a, that a new development will make surface water uh, runoff worse. It can make it better. It depends what solutions are put forward. Um, at that time, but we just don't have the details to assess at this stage because of the applications only and outline. outline so yeah. we're looking at the principle and the access. Thanks. Okay. Councillor Holgate. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just before I start, Steve, you're I'm very quiet. Councillor Holgate. Hello. I can't see you very well. Can you hear me now? Yes. Right, I, I was just saying this. Somebody somewhere is shouting "Oh Christ!" or saying "Oh Christ" uh, in response to some of the comments that have been made by councillors, which is not really on. So uh, I, Jennifer, I think they've been muted now. I was going to right. say. Yeah. Right. Thank you for that. Right. I mean, my my view is on this: that this site was allocated under the local plan for employment purposes. Uh, that. Uh, Maudsley, as a population, uh, mostly leaves the village, so it, it's, it, 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 uh, it transports its residents out to other areas. I don't see this being sustainable development in the larger principle of the word sustainable. We should be encouraging uh, uh, mixed sites in a small village like Maudsley to try and encourage uh, more employment. Now, I'm not sure how robust or otherwise this site has been marketed, but I'm not convinced by it at all. I think we should be trying to create uh, villages with uh, a mixed economy, and this is just adding more houses for more people to travel farther, increase carbon footprint, and we should be trying to encourage the opposite. Uh, Aaron's point about uh, the um, loss of the amenity to uh, uh, 30 uh, New Street, uh, I think, is, is a good one and a reason to, uh, 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 to decline the application. And that's what I'll be doing. Right. Uh, any comments, Ian? Let's come back. Um, yeah, through you, Chair. Just to, just to come back on the on the employment allocation. I mean, the site has been allocated for employment for a number of years now, um, and it hasn't been subject to any applications for employment development or redevelopment of the site. Um, it has been uh, marketed um, through an estate agent uh, for sale since 2011, and it has been on the council's um, employment land register. Um, it's been advertised for employment development, and, and nothing has come forward. Um, and that's that was part of the case that's been put forward by the applicant. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, okay. Chair, can I just can I 
Chair, it's Adele. Can I just make a, another comment in respect yeah, of, of that as well, please? Um, yeah, I'm mindful that there is some concern about the potential impacts on the neighbouring properties. However, we wouldn't be able to sustain a, a reason for refusal on that basis, given that those details are not before members to determine. Thank you. OK. Councillor Marwood. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Adele, for that. I was just about to comment on that. We have to remember here that, uh, on the committee that this is our outline. Basically, we're saying, is this suitable at all for up to four houses? We haven't decided what type, what they look like, what the landscape's like or anything like that. It's simply, should it, can it take four houses? Or as others have said, do we want it to remain uh, industrial? Um, we have to take the officers uh, at their word that they have looked at the robustness of the marketing and we're told that it has been robust and we've just been told it's been um, up since 2011. Um, yes, there are houses, but um, it, it's not our decision to decide on a business plan. It's whether uh, we think the site is suitable for up to four houses. And at the moment, um, uh, I'm in... I'm quite happy at this stage to recommend the outline plan uh, and we'll look at the, the type of houses and all the rest of it when, when, when the time comes. And I'm sure the developer is listening and will take into account everything that's been said by objectors and uh, they will make sure there is some decent landscaping and that the houses aren't going to be too tall, etc, etc. But that's for later. So at the moment, I'm uh, quite happy at the moment to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Whitham. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've been listening to uh, what members have been saying. I didn't uh, participate on the site visit. However, I, I do think due diligence has been done so far, and I'm also happy to go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Whitaker. Thanks, Chair. Um, first of all, if I could say to the uh, developer who uh, was saying that we shouldn't go against the officer's recommendations, uh, the rules are very clear, and we do this often. Um, if planning was an exact science, we wouldn't need a planning committee. Members decide, and often we do go against officers' recommendations. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be said. Yeah. As regards the actual thing itself, uh, flooding, uh, comments have been made about flooding. When the details come in, I've seen on sites like this that uh, they could put water retention facilities in there. Um, as regards industrial sites, almost every village around Chorley has got sites like this and we've been converted to houses. Simple reason is sites with are worth more as housing sites than they are for employment and that's happening all the time and nothing that we do is going to change this. Employment ended according to the officer there in 2010. I do have some sympathy with uh, the resident who talks about schools being oversubscribed and it highlights the lack of consistency, I think, with the parish council because they didn't raise any concerns about schools being oversubscribed. The Goodyear site was being developed. Schools will be oversubscribed, but that's not within our grasp. It's up to the, it's certainly the high school is full already. Uh, it's up to them to make for bigger sites. The access is deemed safe by the LCC and therefore I support the officer's recommendation. Okay, thank you for that. Now, I'll go through everybody again to see if there are any additional comments, and I would like some proposals and seconders, please. Uh, sorry, Chair, may I just in interrupt? I've not actually been asked to speak yet. Who's <laughs> that? <laughs> hey, Councillor Friend. Oh, sorry, you were Councillor Friend. So you not. I do apologise. <laughs> I was being very patient there. You were um, because you're at the bottom of my list and I expect you to be at the top, I think. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> uh, it's just a quick one, really. Um, to be honest, I, I'm quite surprised there's you know, got so many objections, to be honest, regards to this site. I, I accept the access is pretty lousy, but it's been a commercial site for, pro, for employment use for a, lot, for a prolonged period, and that's ex its existent use now. Uh, a straightforward conversion for employment site would give it, give, right, it could give rise to all, virtually anything, and I think that Many of those options could be far less palatable for the housing estate. Um, I think Council Whitaker spoke very well there about the different uh, considerations we'd have to make on this one. But to be honest, I'm um, I think I'm, I'm quite happy to go along with this. And uh, if you'd like, Chair, I'm happy to propose the officer's recommendation. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, any further comments, Councillor Beaver? No, thank you. I would like to second the proposal of the officer's recommendation. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Combs? Um, just a passing comment that I would agree with um, Councillor Holgate uh, regarding the, the employment in the area. Um, public transport in and through Maudsley is is pretty dire. Um, so it, it is, if you're using public transport, it's quite difficult to get out of the village. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that would be all my comments would be. Okay, thank you. Councillor France. Gordon. No comments. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray. No comments. All right. Councillor Hargreaves. Yeah, well, no comments. Councillor Holgate. Just to restate that once this this land has got four houses on it, it will never ever be available for employment again, for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. Uh, economic cycles come and go. Uh, once this is gone, it's gone. So I'll be voting against. Okay. Councillor Marwood. No further comments. Councillor Whittam. No further comments. Councillor Whitaker. No comments. Councillor Chris Frams. I'll not forget you this time. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to go for um, go for it, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, myself, I have no other comments to to add. Well, I'll move to the vote now. Alex, uh, I've, I've had a proposal and a seconder for, uh, which is Councillor Marwood proposed and Councillor Beaver seconded uh, the officer recommendation. I had one proposal for refusal, nobody seconded that. So I will move to the vote. Alex, could you want to say the vote? Uh, thank you, the Chair. Yes. Uh, members, you're being asked to vote on a motion to approve the application subject to the conditions in the report and the section 106 legal agreement to secure improvements to public open space okay thank you so it's for against abstain councillor beaver for thank you councillor combs against councillor gordon france for councillor gray councillor gray I think we've lost Councillor Gray. Councillor Hargreaves? Four. Councillor Holgate? Against. Councillor Marwood? Four. Councillor Whittam? Four. Councillor Whitaker? Four. Councillor France? Four. Myself? Four. I'm and I'll I'm back now, Chair. Councillor Gray? Are you back? Four. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> could you? confirm the outcome. Thank you, Chair. Members have voted to approve the application subject to the conditions of the report and a Section 106 legal agreement. Okay, thank you for that. Moving swiftly on to mm. item 2B, 7 South Port Road, Charlie, pages 32 oh, no. to 58 on your pack with an update on your addendum. Adele will present this item and the recommendation is that the application is approved subject to conditions. I have one registered speaker, Steve Morrison, an objector. Steve, can you confirm you're able to speak and hear the proceedings? Have we got Steve? You've got this, Steve, but it doesn't look like you've got the other one. I've got another I've got Jane, one, can Steve. You can, can someone from, sorry, this is Philippa. Can someone yeah, from my he's there. He's just on mute at the minute and I'm struggling to unmute him. Um, just bear with me. Okay. He may need to do it himself on his phone by pressing star star six. Well, he, sh he should have heard you say that, should he? <laughs> hopefully, yes, hopefully. Hello. Hello. Mr. Morrison. Hello. 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 Steve, Steve Morrison. Ah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to invite you to make your representations when Alex has started the timer. Okay. Right, Alex. Chair, would you like okay, me to uh, Mr. Morrison, Alex, please. Please. Hang on. Uh, I'll chair. Just, just a moment. Somebody was going to speak to me. Yeah, Chair. Hello. Yeah. The report's not been presented yet, has it? No, it's, I've got, chair, it's the Adele like first. first. Sorry, yeah. I know. 
Hello? Hello. Hello? Can you hear us, Mr. Mawson? Can you hear us? I can, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we're just about Adele, to present Adele, the report, Adele. so if you hold on the line for a little bit, we'll present okay. the report and you can listen to the officer's um, report and then you'll it's get your my, chance to make your representation. Okay, it's my Thank fault. You. I forgot that Adele was going to present the report and then I'll come to you because we no. lost you. Okay, no, no problem. Thank, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, this application no. seeks full planning permission for a three-storey detached building that would accommodate a dental surgery with five flats above. The site is currently occupied by a single dwelling house that benefits from a large garden extending to the boundary with Southport Road where there is a pedestrian access. Part of the site of the adjacent dental practice at number nine Southport Road also forms part of the application site. The proposal includes the demolition of the existing bungalow with the full closure of the access onto Shaftesbury Place and a new access would then be located to Southport Road. As the officer report explains, part of the site is comprised of residential garden serving the dwelling house and the area itself is a locally important area having historical significance at a local level. It is, however, a non-designated heritage asset and the existing bungalow is not of traditional character or in keeping with the style of Shaftesbury Place or Southport Road. As a result of the detailed negotiations undertaken, the proposed development is now considered to be of a high quality design, more in keeping with the character and appearance of the area than the existing bungalow. It would also deliver benefits in terms of additional housing with a dental surgery its associated jobs in a sustainable location and significant weight is afforded to these benefits. Highway matters have been resolved with Lancashire County Council who are satisfied with the scheme and a safe access would be provided to Southport Road. It is not considered that there would be any adverse impacts on residential amenity including those of future occupiers of the apartments or existing properties in the locality. A condition is recommended that would ensure that bin storage area would have a suitable enclosure to avoid adverse impacts on the coach, coach house which adjoins the site. And again, I just draw your attention to the recommended conditions that are detailed on the addendum. The application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Now, Steve, it's, it's time for you to make your representations. Right. Alex, can you start the timer, please? Yes, Mr Morton, I'll start the timer now for three minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm best described as an ambivalent objector since I'm a patient at the dental practice which has a very high standard of dental care and I hope it continues to survive and indeed to thrive. The original application that uh, was submitted was riddled with inaccuracies and some misleading statements. Secondly, I was concerned that no reference had been made to the two mature Acer trees that were dedicated by the late Bishop of Blackburn, Stuart Cross, in 1984. They were provided for the visual enjoyment of the five resident nuns there. I was surprised that the planning officer never saw fit, so far as I'm aware, to recommend a revised submission of the flawed application and that no acknowledgement was made in reference to these two mature Acer trees. Last year, the trees were felled. This action, I don't believe, could have taken place without the approval of the planning officer, who is either unaware of ecclesiastical law, or just demonstrated a slight disdain of my um, observations. It's all the more surprising when you consider that central government has put forward plans for an extensive planting of trees in accordance with the urban tree challenge which proposes 50,000 new trees to be planted by 2021 and over 30,000 hectares by 2025 and I can't help but recall in the previous uh, hearing I was witness to about the environmental concerns raised by a number of councillors with regard to an application being made in Maudsley. That concludes my ambivalent objections or objections towards the development of the new dental practice. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you very much. Adele, do you want to come back on anything? Um, yes, Chair, thank you. O only to say the 
um, the scheme that was originally put forward was considered by um, officers to be unacceptable, hence why there's been some detailed discussions and negotiations go going on. The application was actually submitted at, at the latter end of 2018, so there's, there's been a, a whole dialogue with the, the applicant. Um, yes, it is always regrettable that, you know, when, when healthy trees um, are felled, but my understanding is that was undertaken outside of the, the planning application process and um, didn't require the consent from the local planning authority because there was no TPO in place. Um, that doesn't form part of this application as, no. it's, as, as it's now gone. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. I'll go through each member now in alphabetical order for any comments, questions, etc. Councillor Beaver. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, predominantly, I um, support the officer's recommendation and I will, be pro I, I, I will propose that it be accepted, but I'd just like to draw uh, your attention to just two things that's on page 34 within the um, objections that the existing dental practice in 808 which is concrete to other business is not it's not relative to other business the other business predominantly is uh, solicitors this is dental practice and the loss of the, the two trees has nothing to do with Charlie Council um, there is uh, conditions within it where uh, trees will be replanted and I can assure the uh, uh, Mr. Marston, that Charlie Council has an extensive plan to plant thousands of trees. Some have already been done and some are to be done. So on those two matters, uh, I rest my case and I propose that we accept the officer's recommendation. Thank you very Thank much. You. Councillor Combs, any comments, questions? Um, I think my only comment would probably be um, the fact that it's a, the, they're looking to put a three-storey building there that, that um, I don't I'm not familiar with the area particularly, but um, it, it seems quite a, a, a tall building. Maybe it's not. Um, my other, uh, something I did notice that I, I could only find 16 parking places. I don't know where the other one's gone. Um, but apart from that, um, no, I wouldn't have any other comments to make. Do you want to come back and anything, Adele? Um, yes, Chair. Thank you. Through you. Um, yes, I would urge you to look at the photographs in the presentation in the in the pack, which clearly shows that there are existing properties of three storeys in height um, adjoining the site. And so it, it is um, kind of like a local vernacular detail in, in terms of the immediate street scene. OK, okay thank you. Councillor Gordon France. Yeah, I've noticed in the addendum that there is a, a condition now for a cycle store. This is fairly close to the town centre. I think with that, I would be willing to go for the uh, application. Thank you, Councillor Gray. I'm going with the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much, Councillor Hargreaves. Yeah, I'm happy with the application. Thank you, Councillor Holgate. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I think uh, people on Shaftesbury uh, will be uh, mighty pleased because of that particular. Uh, access will be uh, closed off and the access will be from uh, uh, St Thomas's Road or is it Southport Road by then, I'm not sure yeah. which. But uh, it, in, in principle I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it because uh, the, uh, the proposal is, as you said, it's a quality proposal now. Uh, it, uh, it deals with a, a long-standing issue to do with parking on Shaftesbury. Uh, uh, but I must say you know, whilst I agree with Aaron that this particular application has nothing to do with the defelling of two ACE trees, it does have something to do with Charlie Council. And if we uh, are unable as a council to stand by, to do anything other than stand by and watch beautiful mature trees chopped down, then uh, we need to start looking at that part of our policy as well. Uh, but I recognise that it's not part of this application and I'm happy no. to second the application okay, for approval. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Marwood. Thank you, Chair. Um, just in reply to Councillor Holgate, I believe we are looking, re-looking at our uh, tree policy and I'm sure that we will be uh, in future doing much better on yes, this one. Thank you. Um, uh, in terms of the application, I'm very happy with it. In fact, I think it will be a, a a positive benefit to the street scene. Um, uh, to just come back to Councillor Corns, uh, if she does look at sort of page 49, you, you'll basically find that they're virtually um, replacing what was probably there many years ago. 
it's going to be built of the same uh, materials, similar materials to the existing houses on each side. In fact, and it will look, uh, I feel sure, uh, look uh, perfect in that that position, which at the moment is uh, a bit of an eyesore, I yeah. think. So I'm happy to, uh, I don't know if it's been seconded, but I'm I happy to say that. I think you've oh, that's okay. It. Well, okay, well, I'll just uh, <laughs> yeah, support okay. everyone else. Thank you very much. Came to the wicket. Sure Thank you, Chair. I'm, uh, I have nothing too much to say other than that it looks um, a, a decent proposal, and uh, I'm happy to go along with the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Whitaker. Uh, I've not been able to uh, just spot where the parking space is. My concern when I read the report was about parking spaces for five flats and uh, whatever. Um, somebody just said then that there are 15 parking spaces. Uh, and the closing off the. I remember when we went on a site visit for the nursery on, and round the back at Shaftesbury Place, there were real issues on Shaftesbury Place. Mm -hmm. But that centre, that access is being closed off, from what yeah. somebody said. I just want the officers to confirm for me that there are, in fact, what they consider to be adequate parking spaces for the occupiers of the flats. It's all right putting biking places in, but not a lot of people use bikes these days, uh, unfortunately. So. Could I just ask a question? Are there adequate parking spaces for the residences of the flats and for the uh, surgery? Adele. Um, yes, yeah, through you, Chair. Um, yeah, first and foremost, can I draw your attention to page 50 of the pack, Councillor Whisker, because that sets out the, the proposed layout of the site where you'd be able to identify where the car parking spaces are. And yes, on balance, we do consider that there's adequate parking um, for the for both the business and, and the flats and obviously that is supplemented by the cycle parking as well. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Councillor France. I have no comments to uh, offer at this time, Chair. Thank you. Okay. And I've not, I'll just go through everybody quickly. I've got a proposer, already a proposer and a seconder uh, for the officer recommendation. I've got all the proposals. So has anybody any other comments to make? If not, I'll move to the vote. Councillor Beaver, any other comments? Uh, only that, if you look on Google Earth, that street is absolutely splattered with three storey buildings. That's yeah. it, thank you, Chair. Councillor Combs? Yes, apologies for that. I had um, I, I have re looked at it. You're quite correct. OK. Councillor Frams? It was regrettable the trees were, were chopped down, and I'm assured by Councillor Moore Woods. Um, Assured us that things will change. Okay, Councillor Gray. No comment. Councillor Hargreaves. No comment. Councillor Holgate. No comment. Councillor Morwood. No further comment. Councillor Whitaker. Uh, Whitam, sorry. No further comment. Councillor Whitaker. No comment. Councillor France. No comment. Okay. Uh, right, in that case, I'll move to the vote. Uh, it was proposed by Councillor Beaver and seconded by Councillor Holgate, I think. Yeah. We move the, have the officer of information. Alex, can you confirm the, that, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Members are being asked to vote on a motion to approve the application for permission subject to the conditions in the addendum. OK, so I, mm. I'll call through you alphabetically to vote for or against. Or abstain. Councillor Beaver? Four. Councillor Combs? Four. Councillor Franz? Four. Gordon? Councillor Gray? Four. Councillor Hargreaves? Four. Councillor Holgate? Four. Councillor Marwood? Four. Councillor Whittam? Four. Councillor Whitaker? Four. Councillor Chris Franz? Four. And myself, four. Alex, can you confirm? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted unanimously to approve the application subject to the conditions in the addendum. OK, thank you very much. And we'll move swiftly on to our last item. We see Westway Plainfields, Astley Village, pages 59 to 84 with an update on your addendum. Ian's going to present this item. It's recommended that planning permission is granted subject to conditions. I have no registered speakers. Ian, can you present? please yes yes thank you chair uh, this item is a council application that seeks full planning permission for the construction of a compact athletics facility and installation of associated storage containers as part of a comprehensive redevelopment of uh, the westway playing field site 
Planning permission for a sports pavilion, artificial grass pitch, floodlights, fencing, children's play area, area, car park and associated landscaping works was approved in October last year and the proposed development would fit within this uh, overall scheme. The proposed developments would have no detrimental impact on the character of the area or neighbour amenity over and above that which has already been approved, uh, nor would there be any further detrimental harm to uh, ecology or biodiversity. Uh, Sport England raised no objection to the development and uh, it is proposed uh, it, the, the, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable in accordance with the policy of the development plan and is recommended for approval subject to the conditions set out on the addendum. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I'll go through members for any comments, questions, recommendations, proposals. Councillor Beaver. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, all I'd like to say is that we've spoken about this application on a number of occasions. Uh, I look forward to it uh, being completed and coming to the benefit of the Charlie residents and for the surrounding areas. I accept the recommendation and propose that it be accepted. Thank you. Councillor Combs. I have no comment to make on it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gordon, France. No comments. All right, Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray. No comment. No comment. Thank you. Councillor Hargreaves. No comment. Councillor Holgate. Uh, no comment. Councillor Marwood. Uh, happy to second the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Wickham. I'm happy with it too. No comment. Thank you. Councillor Whitaker. Uh, as the rural champion, I have no comment on the application other than to say I wish some of these facilities were available in the outlying areas. Hello, <laughs> yeah. Chris Fram. Uh, no comment. Right, OK. I have a proposal and a seconder, and as people have no comments, I think I can move straight on to the vote on this. Alex, would you confirm the... Uh... Yes, Chair. Uh, members, you're being asked to vote on a motion to approve the application for permission subject to the conditions in the addendum. OK. Uh, I'll call, go through you all in alphabetical order for against abstain. Councillor Beaver? Four. Councillor Corns? Four. Councillor Franz? Four. Councillor Gray? Four. Councillor Hargreaves? Four. Councillor Holgate? Four. Councillor Morwood? Four. Councillor Whitham? Four. Councillor Whitaker? Four. Councillor Franz? Four. And myself, four. Alex? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted unanimously to approve the application subject to the conditions in the addendum. OK. I've no urgent business, so that's the end of the meeting. All the items that have been considered. Thanks to everybody involved. And the meeting is now closed. Good afternoon. Well done, Chair. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank you, Chair.